Okay. And so it's four four past eight. So I think we'll just start, right, Martin? Um, Go ahead. Okay. So welcome everybody to tonight's um, Evolute Expert Talk. And uh, tonight, this is with Martin Pemantier, um, who is um, a jack of all trades, I can say. So he has been in um, an entrepreneur um, and consultant and uh, business owner for 30 years. Um, um, the company is Shortcuts, and it's a, a, a corporate identity, communication, marketing strategy, consulting, consulting firm um, that has moved more and more over the years, I think, in the direction of um, values, consulting as well. So um, aligning deeply with um, what's important for us individually, then for the teams and for the organizations and consulting people in that respect. Um, and Martin's also a facilitator and um, the founder of several leadership networks. Um, the most recent one called Haltung Erweitern, so mindset expansion, quite fittingly. And Martin is also the author of uh, several books, uh, Werte wirken, which means something like values work, I guess, in English, uh, <laughs> or values have impact. And um, then there is, of course, mindset matters and mindset expansion. And uh, so we thought, okay, if we talk about mindset development, we need to talk to Martin. Um, whose uh, fantastic um, models and also visuals we also use for some of our um, uh, programs. Um, and um, so it's with great pleasure, Martin, that we welcome you tonight for the Evolute Expert Talk. So we'll have uh, one hour, uh, around one hour together. And um, so first I will open the space a bit with my own questions. I hope like reflecting a bit what you're interested in as well. And then uh, I will hand over to you and you can ask your uh, questions and all the questions that haven't been answered. Um, and I hope Martin will be able to answer them. How does that sound? Very good, thanks. <laughs> Great. So um, my first question is, Martin, um, what is the mind and what is a mindset? Because if we say like, so we talk about mindset development and how it works, we first should maybe clarify what do we mean when we say mind or mindset. So um, how would you respond to that? Well, you already put me in the difficult realm of words. <laughs> and uh, actually, the mindset is about words and constructing meaning in words, whereas the mind, as I understand, it, would be, let's say, the seed of consciousness and and uh, within you and then the uh, faculty to perceive it to perceive something consciously and the mindset is kind of the translation process from what the mind receive to uh, what you uh, construct in your self story or in your ego so basically a lot of what i use in my models for mindset development come from ego development which is a linguistic constructive um, model from Jane Lovinger. Some of you might know that. So uh, there's the mind that experiences reality, and then there's mindset who retranslate it into who I am and my self story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, then, what are kind of examples of um, mindsets, maybe, um, so we can get a better grasp, like? for what that means, how we translate this into a story yes. about ourselves. Um, what are example stories you could say? Well, the easiest way to explain, and I usually start with that, is explaining it by your biography. So if you look at yourself, you started as a baby and you didn't have a proper mindset, you know, that it was just you looking at the world, just with this one perspective of looking out. And then uh, when you were two or three, a language came into play. And then something different starts. You get a second perspective on life and you get uh, words to create an identity, which is called a self-oriented identity. So that is, you know, it's me, my impulses and the world out there. And it's a pretty, uh, it's, it's a concept of uh, power and, and feeling powerless and being very much uh, um, connected to your impulses, but not really able to go into abstraction about who you are or what your mind is experiencing. 
And then as you go on as a kid, uh, you start to develop uh, the concept of uh, other people, we, and culture, and, and your identity recreates itself or kind of uh, restructures itself into what is called a conformistic mindset, where you kind of follow what the rules are of your uh, society. And that is your identity. That's your mindset. And then something interesting happens sometimes in puberty or sometimes later, you get a third perspective. That is as if a light switch on within yourself that can look at your own mind and you can start to see your thoughts. Yes, and that is called the rationalistic functional mindset. It's called the third perspective. And often that's when, when uh, you start to have clearer memory. It's not for all the people, but many people start to have clearer memory when this starts and suddenly your identity changes. I'm not like every other, other boy, yeah, but my mindset tells me mm, I'm special. I'm better at this and not so good at that. So that's another way how you can see how your mindset expands, how you get new abilities. You can hold more within yourself and explain to yourself more what is happening within your mind. Mm -hmm. Like you relate differently to reality. Reality is always the same coming to you in, in forms of different phenomena and stimuli, but the way you can relate to it becomes bigger and bigger and more diverse. And basically, it's your character changes, your interpersonal style changes, your cognitive style changes, and your attention focus changes. Uh -huh. And as your mindset expands, you start to become more aware of your inner world, which is and, and be able to reflect on it. And suddenly you start to see, oh, what kind of feelings do I have? Do they belong to me? Do they belong to others? What's my aim? Yes, and, and the mindset becomes bigger and bigger. And uh, later in life, sometimes the fourth perspective starts that you not only see your thoughts and feelings, but you see the way you see them. Like the, the, you start to develop an observer of your observer. You not only observe yourself, but you see how you observe yourself. And that is where it becomes interesting with self-development uh, because your inner world becomes more part of your awareness. And it always has been there, but your mindset is now expanded and able to see more and to also put more into words and describe it. And when you say so, observer of the observer, would that be something like, um, ah, I notice I look at myself like a bit harsh, harshly with a strong, like, um in a critic like critically or i look at myself lovingly is this kind of what you mean when you say i observe the uh, the way i observe or something else kind kind of let's say uh, we all have this uh, certain self righteousness so how we think i'm 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 right I, i know better than the other and then you see the 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 patterns of how you do that and you start to be more aware of your let's say bi biographical uh, body how you became this or what the limitations of your personal subjective way is of perceiving the world. Mm -hmm. And you get rid of the idea that you, you perceive the world in any objective way, but you see the deep subjectiveness of you relating to the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I see more of the context and I see more, perceive more of my subjectivity. That's kind of in this fourth perspective that you introduced, right? Right, and you see how deeply limited you are through your subjectivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and so when we when we go back to the um, beginning, so what I understand is so we start kind of as undifferentiated awareness, as a baby, you said, and then through our interaction with the world, kind of, um, which is also kind of constraints, right, limits, um, we... Um, develop ourselves basically um, and in, in different stages like first we learn about power what can I get or not get then I learn about relationships um, how can I fit in and so on then I learn about knowledge uh, what I know who I am and so on then I develop meta perspectives and then this gets more differentiated but it's basically um, I form like structures um, within myself that guide my perception and then also my capacities um, so, um, 
And is this then how you would um, describe mindset? Kind of, it's my um, way of perceiving and thinking and feeling and acting in the world. Um, yeah, ba basically, yes, it's your way of meaning making intellectually, but also emotionally. Yes, how you, what you think, how the world is, and uh, and it has a lot to do how you create your own I or your ego which is basically a collection of narratives. How, what I tell myself who I am. I am a boy. I am a good boy because I can do this and that. I'm better than he. So these are the self stories that you tell mm. yourself, which become more and more and more complex within time. And they include more phenomena. Yes, more differentiated way. I'm somebody who has a past and in the past experienced this and that. And because of this, I'm that and so on. So these uh, uh, self stories can become more complex and you construct your ego or your eye through these stories. And once you um, start to develop the observer of you, the observer, you start to deconstruct them again. And then the ego or uh, the ego construct becomes uh, deconstructed basically. And so, but this sounds like, so um, the the mind or a mindset, I know that you prefer the German word Haltung, um, like is, is more like a language um, thing, right? It's the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. Is this, is this a focus because um, and the mindset model comes from adult development uh, theory and it comes from linguistics, so it has a strong emphasis on language? Or do you think that we are uh, mostly defined by language and that that's why we should focus on the stories or am I getting this not right? So. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's delicate, but the, the what Jane Lovinger found out is the ego is basically made out of language. I am. You know, whatever I tell, it's a story made out of language. Mm -hmm. But the self maybe is not. Mm -hmm. or the mind is not. That mm -hmm. that is a much wider area where you can experience the world. But the the language or our ego construct is in a way a filter between us and the world, mm -hmm. and it filters it either very uh, rough. Yes, and no, these are stupid people, those are the good people. Yes, and then you have a very rough filter and you 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 see you look at the same world, but your interpretation is quite different depending on your mindset. So let's say the ego or the I is constructed through words and guess what can also be deconstructed. So there is a self, you could say, or you could use a different word for that, or the mind that is beyond words. But as it is, we have to go through the words or through the realm of words because our consciousness is so related to using words or construct itself through words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, like, I wanted to ask you, so <clears throat> yeah, what then is mindset expansion, right? Or mindset development from your perspective? And what I have heard so far now then is we tell more and more complex, nuanced, subtle stories about ourselves. But there's they're always like stories and they're very important for us. And then there is maybe um, an underlying reality that is not connected to language, which is perception um, and uh, different sense modalities that are not language, which also can develop maybe and change and expand. Or like, how should we think about uh, development? Um, also in light of those stages you outlined and then the language level and the pure perception level. Like, um, yeah. I hope this question is not too complex. It's like, a, it's a big one. You can start wherever you want or limit yourself also to what you want to. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's an easy question. No, one way <laughs> to look at it is uh, from states and stages. Mm. So you can have, let's say, an altered state of consciousness also when you're four years old, five years old, seven years old, 10 years old, and something changes and you suddenly realize Ooh, this this is a different way of perceiving myself, of being in the world. And maybe you're hyper aware and maybe your senses open up in a way you haven't experienced before. Mm. And it does not depend on your mindset. But the way you interpret it, you reinterpret it into your story, that's filtered through your mindset, through your stage. And depending on what stage you are, you will have different interpretation. 
and you can see that how uh, how cultures interpret uh, altered state of consciousness in different ways depending on their stage depending on their logic or their psychological complexity they had they could use they make good gods and bad gods and they make power gods yes if if that was was their stage of interpreting that uh -huh. and if uh -huh. you're more let's say psychologically sc uh, schooled and and you know to verbalize yourself and your self story in a more complex way you will interpret the state in a different way you will mm -hmm. re relate to it in a different way mm -hmm. okay now you already introduced the idea of altered states and, and if if they might help us and as you know kind of evolute institute is like dealing in the business of uh, creating i didn't spaces. know <laughs> <laughs> creating, creating spaces um uh, for development and we use altered states of consciousness consciously for uh, um, uh, catalyzing uh, this kind of development and so i would like to ask you so um um how does how does development work um can people decide to develop can other people make other people develop or help them develop um and what about those catalysts are they necessary are they um um, um maybe um, not necessary so how do you think about this whole um issue of development and catalyzing development through different modalities yeah that, that's uh, very interesting why do some people develop and expand their mindset and others do not and sometimes it is uh, because of the circumstances where your meaning does not make sense anymore And uh, uh, Umberto Maturana said something interesting. He said, when you experience emotional tensions, like you're, you're, uh, he said, the emotions experience the world firsthand. They're, they're faster than their thoughts. They're already out there and, and they perceive something. And then you feel tension. Then you use words and meaning making to release that tension, to give it meaning. Ah, it's because like this. Ah, this means that. And And so by putting words on it, you, you release certain tensions. And at a certain point, that doesn't work anymore. You, see, you realize the way you make meaning doesn't do it anymore. Yes. And then through, so often the development of a new expanded mindset is, um, is, a, uh, is a crisis. Yes. Let's say you have a relationship and you thought it was love. And then you say, no, it really doesn't make sense. It isn't love. It doesn't feel like it. And what I've told myself, it, it, it is not. Yeah, so I have to go through that, make new meaning, look at different perspectives, talk to others that give you additional perspectives. So a lot of our, let's say, healing or coaching rituals are actually rituals in talking. Or let's say the, the talking cure that uh, Freud invented. By talking about your emotional tensions, you expand the mindset, you expand the way you, you can uh, create your self-story and through that release tension. Mm -hmm. So basically, a mindset ex in expansion is an answer to experiencing tension. And it has to be uh, personally important, emotionally demanding, and it's interpersonal and it has also to be interpreted as a positive challenge. Mm. So uh, how, why do, how do uh, altered state of consciousness come into play? Often these are experiences that you cannot, uh, uh, let's say, uh, answer with your uh, normal meaning making. You can try and reduce it to whatever your normal meaning making is. Or you can say, oh, this was really new. I never experienced that. This is different. How can I make sense to that? And what did I experience in there? What kind of perspective was shown to me? So let's say, like we say, the fourth perspective that can see your observer. There's also the fifth perspective that sees how you exist in your stories. And they say when you're the fifth, fifth perspective, the necessity of creating uh, an ego or an I is released. So let's say it's an ego-free way of uh, perceiving what it is to be alive and in contact with your senses and in contact with reality. Mm 
So that can be quite an uh, amazing reference experience to be in that space, to see I'm totally alive, I'm super aware, but my story is gone. My self story is gone and I don't need it to be in this space. So, and that can, can be a, let's say an experience of progression to make yourself interested in, let's say, deconstruct some of your ego stories. So the, I mean, the fourth perspective is like construct awareness still. So still working with language. And then the fifth, we let go even of the language again, and we come, become part of the flow or a flow. Um, and we are that much outside of our traditional way of making sense that we can really uh, reconfigure it kind of. It's really a, um, a liquefaction of those ego structures uh, the, uh, that you mentioned. Am I getting yeah, it right? Right. And that's what, what let's say, different uh, practices of consciousness uh, point to. That it's, it's also called the dialectic realm or non-dualistic Advaita, whatever you call mm. it, that you go beyond language which is by nature dualistic and you see the dualistic nature of uh, language. And you suddenly start to realize, well, you know, in a dialectic world, you know, the, the good and the bad only exist as a couple, like in yin and yang, you know, in the symbol that they they mm. they exist only in unity. Mm. Yes, and and the unity of of all things uh, brings you uh, to the point of uh, let's say uh, somebody asked me how do we relate to emotions in uh, in in these uh, further states, and then uh, the thought came to me from Walt Whitman: neither preference nor denial. You see it as it is. You experience it as it is, without having to put all these things. Oh, this is good. This is bad. This is. Uh, better this is worse but it is what it is so the, the, this let's say the the purer way of connecting to reality which you uh, do always like it's not something new and that's also why you sometimes have this feeling of coming home or becoming really who you are because suddenly you don't have this disturbance of language and your stories standing between you and perceiving life Hmm. Yeah, that's great. So I, so the way I I understand this is kind of now that the um, the mindset development or um, expansion is a progressive liquefaction of identifications of um, um, habitual patterns, maybe uh, of those structures, um, and at at the very end of this, it even dissolves uh, not just ordinary tensions but the polarities themselves kind of even the polarities that are in language and and if this is dissolved then actually um we might feel unbounded or um unified um with something else or, or we we realize ourselves as being that underlying field maybe even so in the in the very very high non-dual states but that kind of when we talk about the different mindset stages it's always kind of letting go a bit of some identifications and um, fixed structures. Um, um, and then, then altered states might help us with this. This is kind of the idea then, right? Um, uh, to liquefy, where otherwise we would um, resist maybe. Our ego resists or the, the structures resist. Um, you, you could say that, you know, that there are various descriptions of these stages, the drop in the ocean, you know, and then and it's... The combination of being this autonomous awareness, and at the same time, you do not exist uh, autonomously, but only in connection with that you are nature, that you are this world, you are a fruit of, of all this. You, you, you cannot disconnect yourself to it. You mm. are completely connected and at the same time, unique drop in the ocean. Oh. And uh, Robert Keegan, who also is an um, important scientist from Harvard, who also did the in, uh, inner development goals, which are now pretty uh, becoming popular in connection with the sustainable development goals. He described it in a way, to what uh, stage are you uh, identified with your uh, perceiving process? I perceive that... So let's say in the early stage, you think if you're angry, you think you made me angry. 
Yes. And I am, I am very angry now. And, and uh, in a later stage, maybe you would say, oh, there's anger in me. But it, I can let it go. You do not identify with that anymore. Hmm. So this, this, uh, how much of your perceiving process can you look at objectively and how much are you absorbed in it subjectively? So, mm -hmm. and that goes with time. You can see yourself as a perceiving being more objectively. <laughs> and in earlier stages, or when you're angry, you think you are your perceptions. Mm -hmm. And later you realize, I have these per perceptions. So same as you do in meditation, you know, your thoughts come and go. Uh -huh. And you start to realize, oh, I'm not my thoughts. They come and go. Oh, I'm not my feeling. They come and go. Yes, uh -huh. And you, you see that, that life is a process that goes through you. And that is easier with an expanded mindset. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but now, so, uh, the way you um, described the higher states, you also made it sound like we could be curious about those states. Before you said, like, it's crisis. Usually, we only want to develop when there's crisis. And you even suggested that by taking psychedelics, we put ourselves artificially in a crisis. <laughs> and then the meaning making has to start again, kind of. I need to make sense of this, right? I have the crisis if, like, let's say I'm betrayed in my relationship and suddenly, like, uh, everything I believed in doesn't make sense anymore. So this is a crisis, right? A personal crisis. Um, but I could also cause a crisis if I take a high dose of psychedelics, you say. And both processes would kind of trigger soul searching an attempt to make new meaning and so on and might help me then maybe um, um, get higher perspectives like do mindset expansion or so on right is this um, how you would say it what's about the curiosity part I, I I kind of I want to develop like it's voluntary <laughs> not crisis well it, and it's not so rare that people in these states experience this this fear of dying You, you come to an altered state and your your stories dissolve and suddenly you realize, oh, who am I? Who am I? I'm getting lost. Oh, send me a doctor. You know, I'm dying. I'm dying. And of course, they're not dying. But the story is dying. Mm. And to, to realize who are you without this story can be devastating if you're, if you're not ready for that. Yes, and that's where, where people say, oh, don't do this. You know, it's it's uh, dangerous. Yeah. Or for others, it can be liberating. And they say, ah, finally, I happily arrived and, and can connect to life in a purer way. And maybe you have a practice of meditation or other things that help you to be stable or more stable in these states. So that is why also the descriptions or the experiences are so diverse Because every experience in, let's say, a transpersonal state is retranslated through your mindset and you make a different meaning out of it. And they all have rights. You know, some say, oh, it was horrible. Others say it was difficult, but I saw a lot. So maybe they have experienced the same thing, but the way to retranslate it into their normal ego habitual mindset is differently. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, by uh, I, I often ask people if they have we, we often talk about regression you know when you go through earlier mindsets when you're angry and you really identify with your with yourself and your stories and you want others to <laughs> to follow your story but also often people experience progression that suddenly they have these different awarenesses and also these these examples are known when somebody dies when a child is born and you have your young born in your hands and you think oh my god you know and then you see how you're connected to life itself and and what it does with you and it, this is also like an altered state and that can have immense power for you to change your attitudes to change your lifestyle to to do lots of things so also these other experiences of uh, a state with more perspectives can also often let you have a different view on traumas, on your emotions, because you see suddenly maybe your emotional patterns without being so identified. And you see, oh, this, this is me. And then you look at yourself like a stranger and, and uh, maybe can get some insights from that that you can use for your development. 
Uh, yeah, I, I want to uh, give space to the to the audience, even though I have so many questions. I just want to uh, kind of maybe relate to two things uh, that you just said. Um, so as, as you said, like sometimes people uh, are afraid of having a bad trip, for example, when taking psychedelics, or they might experience their experience as a bad trip, while um, um, other people who get in with maybe a different kind of preparation, or as you say, a different mindset, might interpret this experience as maybe a challenging experience, but a beneficial one, because they met their demons, their fears, their suppressed shadow parts, and working through difficult emotions might be beneficial, even though it's not like then a pleasant experience, of course. So I agree with you that very much um, yeah, it's it's the mindset, but also then how, how the experience is framed and how people prepare shapes the interpretation of what comes out of it. And then the integration part is very important also to support people in their meaning making. Um, um, yeah, and it's not good to leave people alone with, with this after they had those intense experiences. Yeah. Well, yes, there, there are different cultural uh, practices, how we now try to use this. And, and if you think about it, it's a fairly new uh, uh, revelation. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, whatever it, the, the psilocybin was discovered in the 50s. I mean, uh, of, of course, uh, the Indian, uh, the Indigen, what do you say that? Indigenous, Indian, indigenous, yeah. Indigenous people, they had it for a lot, for hundreds of years, but it's uh, coming to the West is 70 years old. Mm. There are other things like ayahuasca, maybe a hundred years old. So this is fairly new uh, practice of us using it and making use of it and finding all the ways to apply it in a way that is beneficial. And of course, let's you are in the uh, pioneer front of doing that and bringing good settings to people, preparing them, and maybe also uh, there's more information about it, there's more visualization about it, so you kind of have an idea what to expect, which is in a way sad. <laughs> You're not so surprised anymore, but also maybe also uh, releases some fear hmm. and. Uh, Yes, so I think we're on a pioneering road and there's so much there to discover. It will be interesting, yes. Yes. Um, okay, with this, I I, uh, I didn't get to my second point, but I want to I wanna give the opportunity to, to uh, our um, attendees to ask their questions. Um, um, what are you curious about? You can, um, if you like, unmute yourself and, and speak, or you can write in the chat if you don't want to kind of uh, write in the chat. Uh, want to speak um i know that uh, sasha you had a question <laughs> if you remember your question because yes said... yes during the day i had a question but now i'm so fascinated by your talk that the question somewhat <laughs> slipped uh, thank you to this point <laughs> um yeah so um my question that came up uh, for myself uh, before the event was um um how to make mindset expansion sustainable um especially um having had some uh experiences myself with with uh, psychedelics and having uh, had uh, all kinds of alternate states was yeah um but then again and again kind of finding myself telling the same old stories or how hard it is to yeah, let go of some deep, deeply ingrained, uh, maybe also emotional uh, patterns, I would say. Yeah, that well, was my question. I, I wouldn't say that there's one answer to it, but there are many. But what I find more and more interesting is how much is connected uh, to language and to changing self stories. Yes, and, and also how much it is connected to emotions and experiencing mo emotions and being able to relate to them in a verbal way, to, to perceive them, to talk about them, to describe them, yes, and, and to see these phenomena, how they uh, will, uh, get, get through you. And at the same time, uh, it doesn't, uh, there's always this biography biographical work necessary of uh, liquefying all traumatic emotions and also re-experiencing them looking at them from a more expanded mindset and you know and and, and here i think you are uh, 
it's it's all the the things of of uh, that that heal you all the coaching practices constellation work hypnotic therapy i wouldn't point out one thing uh, but uh, having had a state doesn't state uh, change your stage and maybe that's the disappointment you can have had lots of fantastic states but still stay at the same stage because uh, that's uh, personality work uh, still has to be done and you need to have a practice to do that and you need to have uh, people to do that and that's maybe uh, uh, one of the best ways uh, of, of uh, sus being sustainable find yourself uh, companions that you can be in a safe space with and, and find a rhythm of meeting and talking about things. So so there's nothing, let's say, new to that, but actually doing it is something different. Hmm. So it comes always back to practice. So because it's interesting because people sometimes say ask us also like, so oh, it's like, it looks like a shortcut to development. Are you skipping the... The hard work and i often say ah no sorry it's it's actually it's often an initiation to something it opens new spaces and suddenly you have an idea ah there's much more but then you still need to walk and you still need to do the practice and um um it can give orientation in a way no um but it doesn't um substitute uh, practices as, as as martin you just said um and i was i would say so yeah and it also can connect you to something because of it is in a way magical that you realized, ooh, our consciousness can experience something like that. And I think it's totally magic that this is even possible and that life has this to offer. And to, to be connected to that and this, this deep state of, of connectedness to life itself that I think is a grounding force in itself that helps you through many other things as a reference experience. And we need to have emotional reference experience to stabilize ourselves. And these uh, experiences can be that. So, uh, and it can help you to uh, change attitude. And sometimes people are between mindsets. Let's say some are really uh, career driven and others say, oh, do I want to, uh, be more interested in my inner world and, and suddenly you realize, yes, I go through the inner world and there's no question anymore because suddenly you realize there's so much to find. Yes, this is much more interesting than having more dollars on your bank account for some people. Yes, so it can also be tipping points by having these reference experiences. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. So what I you say is like it can be a resource the state it can be a itself can be a resource and it can be a tipping point that really um, points you to new possibility space and triggers your curiosity so you you intensify your walking <laughs> so uh, you uh, go more quickly or with more motivation or inspiration into a certain direction maybe yes and uh, we, we talked before I think most most people go let's say have these experience two three times in their life and then they say it's fine and for some, it says, I never experienced that kind of love and being loved. And it's enough for me to know that this quality, I know this quality now in my heart that, that is, is part of myself, of my experiences. Mm. And this one experience is enough. And that's fine. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, Sasha, sorry. I... Matthias, no, was your question answered? Do you have a follow-up question? Uh, Matthias also raised his hand, and now it's uh, now the hand disappeared. I don't know what that means, but uh, first maybe Sasha. Uh... I know for me, it's uh, for me, it's fine. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you to this point. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for the question. Uh, yes, Matthias, would you like to unmute yourself? I think you have the power to do so. Oh no, you're not unmuted. Wait. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. Um, thank you very much for um, your inputs. So my question is, um, kind of trying to see. You know, when we talk about mindset expansion, um, especially when it comes in this um, 
in this frame of um, assisting that through yeah in in this way so for me then the question is like I can look at this and tell and say well this is kind of more pleasant for me because then I'm at some point maybe going through the stages uh, becoming more coherent becoming more feeling more in tune with life right so it's kind of a pleasant experience and at the same time for me, it would be very interesting to hear from you. What do you think? What's what's the point of that for life mm -hmm. in your eyes? Yeah. Well, well, I think uh, um, the whole mindset theory also comes from radical constructivism, how we construct meaning in the world. And Karl Heinz first always said, always try to create more options. Yes, so uh, an expanded mindset has more options, more options of interacting with life, more options of dealing with nature. So that's why I'm a lot with uh, leaders in, in industry. So because uh, and that's also why we use these theories in the inner development goals, because we realize if we want to have uh, go through with the sustainable development goals to really, really do a good job of being on this planet, we need to have leaders that do go through a process of inner development. Otherwise, we will not be able to handle complexity, paradoxes, dilemmata, but we will always go for quick fixes and quick wins. So an expanded mindset, even especially in leadership, not for everybody or everybody has to develop, but a leadership uh, that has an expanded mindset sees more options and I think we need leaders that are able to see more options and are also connected to their feelings because that makes the whole difference because we know everything about how to deal with the planet and what are the problems and what we should do but we don't feel it we don't feel it in that sense that we say and now we're going to act on it and I see this uh, actually more optimistic than most <laughs> because I see that this, these mindsets are expanding. You know, we, we do include more perspectives in our lives with, with all the downsides and all the side effects we have now with war and all these things. But there are more and more people that uh, deal with or are able to deal with the problems on this planet in a greater complexity and that's why I think mindset expansion is a meaningful thing for the planet. I hope that got your question. Yeah, um, yeah, spot on. Thank you very much. And it brings up a bit of a follow-up for me, where um, in some way, I also think, I wonder to what extent is us thinking that we should develop our mindset is already part of a little bit of the us being separate because in a way probably life has it anyways no and uh who is who gets to develop the mindset um i guess we don't need to in a way probably we, need, we don't need to worry too much about that but i don't yeah just it's just well, the follow-up though no i think you're very true and i, and I uh, used that quote in, in in my book from Lao Tse, uh handle ohne zu tun how you translate that doing without doing so, of course, it our self-stories is let's develop, let's become better. Yeah, it's also a career thing or a career mind, you know, to optimize yourself, maybe. And then maybe, oh, to become more emotional and, and empathic. And from a certain point, yes, it is happening. And life itself does it. <laughs> and we don't know how it does it or if it does it or what consciousness wants itself to experience in itself in <laughs> but that's uh that's i think when you're more in the non-dualic realm uh, when you realize we are striving but not as an ego but actually to dissolve the ego to realize there was never an ego and there was never somebody who is doing it so these are the paradoxes that uh, come when you're in the dialectic dialectic world. <laughs> and then you read to Lao Tse and he will tell you that. And others, of course, yes. 
Is that good, Matthias? Have you? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, just paraphrase what you just said. So this um, we start out with I want to develop myself, and then at some point we question who is this self actually that wants to develop, right? And our self model, our self concept, um, gets lighter or more permeable and more expanded. And then self development is world development. <laughs> so if if this is really in the most expanded state, right? And um, uh, I think, as you said, like um, it really matters if people are um, uh, able to include more of the world within themselves, because then they will um, make certain life decisions in certain ways, and or also professional decisions in certain ways. And if you speak about leadership, um, if I can include more of the world, then I I will behave differently. Um, regarding uh, employees, uh, the nature, stakeholders, and so on. So if more of the externalities, what has been shut out and excluded, gets included again, then this will create a different world. And so I think, um, um, yeah, this is very important work for, for us as, as a civilization, not just like uh, helping people to self-optimize in, in narrow ways, but the maybe they come for the narrow self-optimization, but then they go with the expanded sense of who they are. So, and this changes the world, right? Um, yeah, but yeah. I took it over, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, if you want to say something, Maria, I, you're next, yes. <laughs> uh, you can unmute yourself and I will spotlight you, yes, sorry. And... Oh, thanks, I, I thought Martin wanted to say something. Maybe, no, no, it's fine. fine. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I have so many thoughts and I just try to kind of structure myself because <laughs> I would have like three or four questions, but I think I'll just um, focus on one or two. So first of all, I'm curious to know from you, like looking at the world currently, um, it's it's shaking, right? And a lot of things happen and I observe a lot of shifts in consciousness, but on the other side, a lot of self-optimization and a lot of like, um you know fight and flight kind of state and freeze and all the other things um so what do you think uh, our world is currently at uh which what kind of stage would you think our world is currently um and the second part of the question would be i mean i'm in this field of you know developing others and obviously developing myself um in parallel and kind of nudging and you know trying to help leaders as well seeing the like be more conscious and uh um yeah go, go into this deeper inner work um i'm just curious because obviously this is a very hard i mean for some not but generally it's it's kind of a long journey right you you it's like at least what i observe for me it develops two, three, four, five years, right? And you kind of come up with a lot of different things uh, based on the phases of, of your life. And then here we are with the leaders <laughs> and want them to be conscious and mindful. And, you know, and uh, ideally after eight hours of workshop or four days of retreat, I mean, I'm exaggerating, of course, it's, it's a nudging impulses that we give, but how long will it take I mean, okay. what do you think? So this is these are the thoughts that I'm currently having, and I yeah, I hope you got my point. <laughs> yes, it's a sad story. We will not see the happy end, I guess. <laughs> well, this is what I was thinking. <laughs> but yeah. No, but I think it's totally fine. You know, that all stages are happening at the same time, and you can see everything. You know, the, the most stupid idiots, idiocy and. Uh, but also very advanced and, and very differentiated people. And it depends where you put the spotlight. And it always has been like this. And I have always lived in a world where people told me it's apocalyptic. It's going to end. I've never been living in another world. Yes, that is kind of the main theme. It's going to end. Yes, And I think it's because we end. So we think if I die, the rest should also die. Because it's kind of, a, you know, I'm going to die and it's not going to be finished and I'm not going to see the final result. And it doesn't matter. 
what matters to me if I'm part of a development mental movement. If I could, let's say, increase consciousness a little bit within myself and others. That's all I can do. And the rest will happen. I don't know in which way, and there's no way to, to foresee that. But often it comes from very strange angles. And you see, oh, this is happening now on the planet or in my life. So, and, and for a more concrete question to one says to, for, for, to go from one stage to another in development, people usually say it takes two or three years when you really want to develop. When you say, oh, I'm really, uh, it's not the way I want it. So, and if you have help from others, let's say therapy, coaching, a group, intense experiences, you go to Evolute Institute, so maybe it takes one and a half years. So, and still there, there are quite a few stages uh, to develop. So it, it needs also time within my, oneself and to look at oneself. Sometimes you can look back and you look at yourself. I used to be like this, but now I don't do that anymore. That doesn't give me meaning anymore. But for many years, that was really what I wanted. And suddenly you become a stranger to yourself. So it's a, a question are you ready to become a stranger of the version you are right now? Or you think, what? I mean, now I'm already somebody, you know, I don't want to become a stranger to myself, you know, because I'm I'm finished. It's the others who are the problem. And I can see that. So <laughs> that that is usually what is happening. We look at the 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 people we think that are not so developed and, and frame them as a problem, which might be true. But that's kind of a reflex. And to look at myself and how can I deconstruct my own version? Yes, and, and give it some time. And I'm totally fine not to have a happy end in front of me. And I'm still very optimistic that uh, the forces also that one encounters in these altered states, they are so benevolent, loving, strong, and, and they will find a way. Yes. Hope so too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're almost coming to the end already. We said like 8 to 9 p.m. only, which is quite short, I guess. Um, but uh, I want to give space to one more question. If someone feels like this is really urgent, I need to ask this Martin now, um, then um, I want to give space to that. Otherwise, I also will ask Martin now then to share like how can we reach him if you want to kind of ask more questions afterwards or um, how they can learn more about your work and so on um, but just like uh, if someone wants like to ask a question now it can't wait oh, it seems it can wait okay um, then um, Martin, if people want to learn more about your work, what can they do? I guess they can buy and get your books and, and read your books. But uh, it, it, um, or what 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 other other ways to uh, maybe be in touch or learn more about um, mindset mindsets and mindset development, the way you um, um, bring it into the world, talk about it. Well, I, I think uh, it's very useful for, for me, it was very useful to get to know about mindset and because it ex explains a lot of uh, phenomena. And also I find now is the time that leadership is ready to hear this kind of knowledge. You know, a few years ago, this would have been totally esoteric. We don't do it and so on. But this explains it in a scientific way what is actually happening in companies, in societies, so they can uh, refer to it and relate to it. And we started a community in German, you know, Haltung Erweitern, where we put together people who want to work with a mindset expansion. And some do it in hospitals, some in politics, some with psychedelics like you do, others uh, do it in other areas. And to bring these people together, because I think the change we are facing needs a movement and it needs people, like-minded people to connect with each other, to stabilize uh, each other. Because a lot of people, they feel like uh, being exotic in their organizations. They think, am I crazy? Am I the only one here? Yes. So we work with governmental, with institutions, 
to get these people together and connect. Uh, recently, I was uh, I talked to uh, school directors, yes, and and they also want to change the system. Lots of people want to change, but they do not know how. So we need to stabilize them and and connect them so they we get do experiments. We share that and and get this feeling. Yes, there there is a potential we can work on together. So these communities have been important, and uh, besides that, we give uh, uh, education programs for people who want to understand more about the model of mindset expansion and use that in the work as a coach, as an organizational consultant, or as a leader. So there are various ways to connect to us. But uh, um, yes. Let's leave it like this. Okay, okay, yeah. So uh, that's maybe, yeah, uh, maybe um, important that when we say mindset development, um, there are many ways to do it without psychedelics. This is just one modality, of course. And and the classic ways would be to have like workshop or training formats, educational formats to learn about it and then have some experiences maybe um, like understanding better which habitual mindset am I in uh, or as a team, which mindset are we in or the organization and so on. And then, uh, through kind of more constellation kind of work, for example, get some um, a new understanding of of what's going on. No, it's it's basically pretty simple actually. What we do when we go to organizations is to ask people, "What do you already feel that you do not put in words yet?" And when you create a safe space of three or four people and you give them various questions and you let them talk about what they feel and they say well you know you really ask me what i feel it is this but i don't dare to say it usually and then the other person normally says really i have the same idea yes <laughs> and suddenly we realize we all are in a way keep ourselves especially in organization let's say in a bit more childish mindset than we actually are we make us a bit more childish and we uh, allow uh, leadership habits that, in, in organization that we wouldn't tolerate in private. Through, so by verbalizing more of what you already feel as being true or important, the whole organization comes into a movement. Oh. It's because you... You, you expand the room of what is uh, not in the taboo zone or what you can talk about. And it's always fascinating how simple that is and how much it is uh, it does for people. And sometimes it's only by changing a few words, by not using the word but. And if a whole organization stops using the word but as an exercise, but they say, and also, it changes the whole thing. And it sounds ridiculously banal, but it does work that way. <laughs> so we have opened the whole space between uh, going from but to and and psychedelics. So the whole space is open now uh, in terms of interventions and ideas about fostering development. Uh, that was lovely. Thank you very much for sharing your insight and your wisdom, Martin, today with us. Uh, we will share with the attendees um, also, then those the links maybe to the Haltung Erweitern community, this the network that you mentioned, and um, and we have the, the podcast uh, that you oh, yeah. are also in. Mm -hmm. I mentioned uh, well, I didn't mention at the beginning. You're also a podcast host. Uh, it's called Ich Wir Alle, um, the podcast, and uh, yeah, so we can share also the link to that podcast. And there's also one maybe you put that in the notes uh, with uh, Susanna Kukreuter. It's in English. And she's one of the leading uh, scientists on mindset expansion, oh. ego development. So oh. that podcast is two hours in English, and she's quite a lady. Yes, uh, very lovely. I saw, I listened to the podcast several times. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Um, so thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. And I hope you learned something, was insightful. Um, and if you like, before you leave, you can write down one takeaway that you have in the chat. One thing you take away from today, um, and uh, we'll be in touch with little uh, after conversation notes, as as Martin said. Um, yes, uh, hope is being taken away.
<laughs> that it can be simple. Yes, and that it, if it is allowed to be, it is allowed to be, can be simple, yes. Ego is made out of language. Yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> and another thank you. Yes, wonderful. Never stop walking. Mm -hmm. As Pia and Matthias know, um, Thomas Hübel always says, we should be walking our questions. So never stop walking our questions and our inner tensions and our, <laughs> our inner language models, everything. <laughs> yes. Sasha, yeah, yeah, I'm not dying yet, just my story. Exactly. Thank you. Tears, my words matter. Yeah. Mm. And a thank you from Rick. Yes, thank you. He's, uh, he's happy that the world is not ending anytime soon, according to your uh, confident prediction, Martin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 500 <laughs> million years. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, Giovanna said, like, yeah, watch out your words as they shape your reality. Yes. Yeah. Very true. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening and we see you around. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.